accused from office. So it is for us to decide what is impeachable in terms of the sun. Now, I have already made a passing mention of the Constitution. Let us go to the laws that are meant to implement the constitutional provision. The first law is called the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act, RA number 3019, Section 7, Statement of Assets and Liabilities. Every public officer within the month of January every, year, every other year shall file statement of assets and liabilities in the proper case with the office of the president or in the proper case with the office of the secretary of the corresponding house or the corresponding chamber. Next law, Code of Conduct and Order, number 6713. The provision of the first law that we cited, anti-graft and corrupt practices, was expanded by the Code of Conduct. And it said, the two documents, meaning to say the statement of the statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth, and the statement of financial disclosure. It says, and I'm quoting, these two documents shall contain information on the following letter A. Real property, its improvements, acquisition costs, assessed value, and current fair market value. That's all that the law said. It did not indicate how we arrive at these. Values. It just says that the sound should contain information on real property, its improvements, acquisition cost, assessed value, and current fair market value. Who determines this? The for public officials. So there is no need for this impeachment court to argue lengthily on what is acquisition, what is assessed, what is current fair market value. These are determinations made by the proper legal officer. And further, the Code of Conduct provides the sound shall be filed by, in the case of senators and congressmen, with secretaries of the Senate and the House, respectively. In the case of justices, with the clerk of court of the Supreme Court. We have already heard evidence that the Chief Justice filed his declaration, and he filed it with the correct official, the clerk of court, from whom the public may see fit by the proper procedures to get a copy. Not only do we have these two laws to guard, guide us, we have to look at its implementing rules and regulations, particularly of the Code of Conduct. The Code of Conduct, in ter uh, implementing rules and regulations, reflects the law itself, meaning to say the Code of Conduct, in providing that the statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth shall contain information on the following, and it repeats, real property, its improvements, acquisition costs, assessed value, and current fair market value. In the internal, in the implementing rules and regulations, we find this, the following statement. In the event said authority determines that a statement is not properly filed, they shall inform the reporting individual and direct him to take the necessary corrective action. The individual to whom an opinion is rendered and any other individual involved in a similar factual situation and who, after issuance of the opinion, acts in good faith underline, acts in good faith in accordance with it shall not be subject to any sanction provided in the code. Underline, shall not be subject to any sanction in the code. This is the basis for the theory by some that since any failure or omission in the SAL is now, has now been decriminalized, it should no longer be considered an impeachable offense because of this provision in the implementing rules and regulations of the Code of Conduct. And there are certain provisions that are provided for failure to do so. Legislation, the civil service rules. You all know by now that the recent guidelines issued by the Civil Service Commission are supposed to govern declarations made for 2011 and thereafter and there are definitions of terms in this guideline. But among the most salient provisions of the guideline is, for computation purposes of real properties, acquisition cost shall be used. That's what the law says. You use acquisition cost. In the past, people did not know what to put 
in their sons, and the law did not say anything. Then eventually the law said you, you can put either acquisition costs as a value or fair market value. Civil Service Commission in practice ruled, although the conjunctive is used for these three values, the conjunctive of and, actually it should be interpreted as or. So you could just choose any of the three. But now we have in this new guideline by the Civil Service Commission that when we compute our real properties, we should use acquisition costs. There's no more question about this. If the public officer fails to comply with the law, he can be charged under the penal code with a crime of falsification for untruthful statements or for perjury. So we have taken a look now by, the, by this time at the Constitution, the applicable laws that are meant to enforce the Constitution. But let me go more deeply into the matter of the failure to disclose or the failure to declare or the, the omission of any declaration. The Civil Service Commission issued the recent guidelines that will govern 2012 and onwards. And it declares that for computation purposes of real properties, acquisition costs shall be used. So you and I, as members of Congress, of the House of Representatives, and of the Senate, beginning from 2012, should now use acquisition costs for our son. But before this guideline by the Civil Service Commission, our bureaucracy was governed by the older guideline issued by the Civil Service Commission in 2006. 2006 resolution of the Civil Service Commission does not provide any guideline. The sound filed by Chief Justice in 2011, but covering the period of 2010, as well as all his previous sounds, was filed according to the old resolution of the Civil Service Commission. I have already said, and I repeat, according to Civil Service Commission, at that time, under the old guidelines, which was very deficient, or let us just say non-specific, it is not necessary to fill up all three values. You could just choose among fair market value, assessed value, and acquisition cost. Now let's come to the question, how should the current fair market value be computed? We have already been told that there are provisions in the local government code because the <coughs> municipalities formulate a schedule of fair market values, and this is what is applied by the city assessors. In our present case, the defendant based the valuation of the assets in his son from the fair market valuation enacted by local ordinances. However, the prosecution contends that the defendant should have used the value by which a buyer is willing to buy the property and the seller is willing to sell. This is the argument that uses the the antique, the age-old, centuries-old possibly, definition by an English writer called Sedgwick in his book, Sedgwick on Damages, and cited in a 1919 case by the Philippine Supreme Court, defining market value as that reasonable sum which property would bring on a fair sale by a person willing but not obliged to sell to a person willing but not obliged to buy. I don't, I don't see what would be the utility of discussing what should be fair market value. We should be discussing the question of whether the defendant committed an impeachable offense when he uh, allegedly erroneously declared, misdeclared certain entries or completely omitted certain entries in his son. Let us see what the and I come now to the gist of what I really wanted to say. Let us not come now to what the Supreme Court has to say. When you fail to properly and completely file your son, what are you committing? What crime are you guilty of? In the most recent case, 2011, Presidential Anti-Graft Commission v. Plato, spelled P-L-E-Y-T-O, PAGC versus Plato, promulgated in 2011, the Supreme Court answered, the failure is not dishonesty, but only simple negligence. That prosecution panel 
should be the topic of your next manifest oral manifestation and particularly